Hello everyone, this is HES Kesk here, back with some more StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm 1v1 action. This time it's going to be more WCS, and I know guys, I know there's been a lot of WCS, but you know why? Do you know why there's been a lot of WCS? Because there are the best players in the world competing for one of the biggest prize pools in recent history, and I am super excited for it. So spawning up in the top right side, it is going to be Liquid Tasia. And his opponent here in the round of four, down in the bottom left uh, bottom left side, it is going to be Star Tail Bomber. This is actually a classic matchup. Oh my god, I'm drinking way too much water. This is a classic matchup between these two players, and I couldn't be more excited for it. Now remember that this is from the round of four, so whoever wins this is going to be facing none other than Jadong in the finals. I kind of accidentally uploaded those incorrectly. My apologies. But all the Jadong games should be up now, so go check those out. And uh, honestly, there is a shockingly low amount of Jadong games on my channel. So if you haven't watched those, then or at least haven't seen the games, then you're missing out. You're missing out. Jadong is the man. And you guys are probably like Husky. You're even fanboying out about Jadong in a game that doesn't have Jadong. And you, you caught me. Guilty as charged. I do love the Dong. You heard it here first. But uh, either way, we are going to be having a TVT here. We actually have a refinery first here for Bomber. So we could be seeing a much more aggressive play out of him. Now, this could mean really early Reapers. It could mean early Widow Mines. It could even mean early Hellions as uh, you're able to get the factory a little bit sooner. And uh, we'll just see. Really, as Terran, I say that uh, I say this a lot, at least in my head. The world is your oyster. I personally don't really like oysters. I'm sorry if that makes me unrelatable, but uh, <laughs> either way, either way, I feel like if you get early gases, Taryn, there's literally an unlimited amount of options. The world is your tomato. I don't know. What's something that everyone likes? Do you, you guys like tomatoes? I don't know. I'm more of a ketchup guy. What what percentage of ketchup is actually tomatoes, though? That is that is the question that uh, I think that really even scientists cannot answer. But uh, either way, going to be lots of gas income here for Bomber. I assume we're going to be seeing a command sphere go down for Teja as he doesn't have the gas, doesn't really have a whole lot going on other than a, a supply depot to wall himself in, which would not be surprising if Teja goes for some macro play. The SCB is going to be scouting this factory right away. And uh, I got to say, that is the pits for Bomber. Um, I'm sure he knows about the cross spawns only on this map. But uh, either way, that SCV able to scout out. And on top of that, the SCV is actually going to survive as well. He was able to get that SCV down the ramp, began harassing just a little bit. I think he attacked like an SCV or, yeah, he, got, he hit the SCV once, the barracks maybe one time, and uh, was able just to see that, you know what, the factory's not canceled. He did have to make a Marine there to deny that scouting. So I kind of know what's headed my way. Now on the flip side, flip it over, man. The StarCraft is like a coin. It's a two-sided coin, guys, and uh, on the other side of the coin, there is not Abraham Lincoln's face. There is not a picture of the, the capital. It, it's nothing. There's nothing over here because he hasn't scouted, so he doesn't know what's going on. That's the point I'm trying to make. God, when I don't cast for a day or two, my, my way of explaining things just goes right out the window. Also, my mouse apparently goes right out the... Hang on. Hang on. We are having severe mice issues right now. Thankfully, not of the kind that run around your house when you don't clean, but uh, there we go. All right, now we're back. We have fixed our mouse... And uh, we do have a starport on the way and a tech lab here. So it could be an early Banshee. That would not be too surprising whatsoever. A little bit surprising to me is the fact that he is going to be going for the uh, reactor here. I'm going to see exactly what that's for in a little bit. But uh, regardless, we do have a factory now on the way for Teja. Also adding on an extra barracks. So Teja's playing it out kind of interestingly here. Uh, number one, he's transitioning right into the supply block. And it uh, looks like he just finished the depot there. Where where did he get that? Uh, but either way, he did finish that up. And uh, I guess the command center was what kind of topped that off. Either way... Teja is going to have to watch out for the Banshee. Is it going to be a Cloak Banshee, though? Is this Banshee going to have the power of invisibility with his invisibility cloak? Uh, we are about to find out, as he does have enough right now to begin researching that. By the time Bomber gets that Banshee across the map, that uh, cloaking would be nearly done. Maybe not completely done, just because it would have been so late. However, actually going to be landing that there. And is he going to start the upgrade? He does start the upgrade there. This is a total psych out, though. Uh, because he's going to be going for the Caduceus Reactor. We'll cancel that. That is, uh, well, well, yeah, that, that's an upgrade that you just don't get, uh, like, ever. So you pretty much cancel that. And it's kind of funny because he does that to trick his opponent into thinking he's getting Cloak. But why not just get Cloak anyways? 
Because uh, if you accidentally let it finish, you don't have this stupid Caduceus reactor, and instead you would ha actually have Cloaky Fix. It costs the same thing, I just realized. Maybe it's bad habit. Uh, not a bad habit, but maybe he's just used to doing that. And also, it, I guess the, the default hotkey is A, so um, based on how your hand sits, it's a little bit easier to hit A than C. I don't know. I guess uh, since he just wasn't going to finish the upgrade anyways, it doesn't really matter which one you get, as long as it was the cheaper ones. We've got the Raven going to be on the way right now, and did... Did Teja fall for the fact that this Banshee has no cloak? We're about to find out. Oh, he did. He's got the one missile turret down. It is going to protect a couple of these guys and get one shot off on that Banshee, but uh, it's still that Banshee is going to prove to be quite annoying here in that uh, it doesn't have cloak, it doesn't need cloak, and is still killing off tons of workers. Uh, several of them going down. Four kills already. I believe that they are all workers. Yes, they are. So four kills on that badge. Going to continue here to harass. A couple of shots going down. The SCVs is able to two-shot right now and uh, does have the five kills there. Overall, I would say this is already worth it. Number one, it's killed uh, five workers. So that is 250 minerals. I'm taking my time on this math. I don't want to embarrass myself too badly. And uh, there's going to be even more workers killed off right here. I don't think Teja was quite expecting this. And you got to remember that the follow-up is going to be lots of dead units. Oh no, he's got the Raven as well. I would say that this uh, this Banshee has definitely paid for itself. This might actually just be an easy win. Game number one for Bomber. And there's Tejon moving out. He's realized that he's been duped as there is actually no cloaking on that Banshee. Now, how does he separate? I, is this actually just going to be it? If he has a tank in there, which he does, this might actually just be it for Tejon. Game number one. We could have a very anticlimactic game one or, or a very exciting start to game number one because uh, Bomber absolutely out playing Teja here. It's the frustration of, uh, of TVT. Can he kill it off there? Of course he can. 14 kills remaining, or 14 kills overall on that Banshee. More kills remain to be seen as maybe this Banshee is eventually going to head on home. I think that uh, Teja has stabilized, but it's kind of like stabilizing after you go into cardiac arrest. You're really not in that great of shape, even though you're quote-unquote stabilized. Oh my god, that Marine right there uh, really going the extra mile with that arm there. Trying to get, whoa, we do actually have a tank over here for Teja, so he does get the first shot off. However, I don't know if he has vision far enough with his own tank here, and the bunker is under siege. He's going to have to start salvaging that if possible. Not even sure if he has time to, so not going to be able to get a full refund or even a 75% refund on that. He did not have the the, uh, the receipt and will be able to kill off that Raven. That is nice because now he's going to have air superiority here. So Teja going to try and push Bomber back here. He's got a nice split on these Marines. I don't think he has enough, though. Sure, he's got his one tank here, but guess what? Way too many Marines for Bomber. He may just march his way to a victory unless his tank on the high ground. Nope, not going to be able to do it. The tank right there is like, oh, thank God, I can forever be frozen in time. This is like in Fringe, man, where they get frozen in Amber. He's just going to sit there forever maybe he'll be rescued in season six but uh, either way it does look like game number one going very decisively to bomber and a lot of it comes down to the mind games i mean he started that caduceus reactor an upgrade you almost never see and a lot of you probably don't even know what that does uh and i will show you it basically makes your medevacs a little bit better once they spawn so right there giving them 25 energy uh, only when they spawn, but that uh, that does carry over because medevacs are very rarely full on energy, which means that that 25 was definitely useful. But uh, of course, canceling that in lieu of getting you know siege tanks, ravens, things like that, and he tricked. He tricked good old Tasia, and it's got to be one of those trick me once, shame on you. Trick me twice, also shame on you for being so mean in this game. But uh, either way, we'll see in game number two. Keep in mind that this is a best of five. So we'll see if Tejan can pull it back. I have no doubt that he can. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.